armed tonight. You know, we got armed this morning with that word of God. You know what? The promises of the Lord are yea yeah, and amen. 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 And we got some promises preached to us this morning that we can stand on. And when all chaos is going on around us, Jesus is still on the throne. Hallelujah. How many excited tonight? Once again, let's give Jesus another hand clap of praise. We invite you to just enter in and let's just worship yes. the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was a lonely idol, I was a sinner too But I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do And I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord oh, Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord oh, Yes, I'm on the battlefield
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a praise tonight in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said everything that has breath, let's praise the Lord tonight. Amen. Let me know he's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we found out a few minutes ago, we, Sister Jean has a, a niece, a great niece. She's had a motorcycle accident. She's in Knoxville, Tennessee, in critical condition, bleeding on the brain, different things. But the sad part is she's lost without God. If she don't get a miracle, she'll die. But how many knows that God still does miracles? How many knows that God still does the impossible tonight? Amen. Let's just call her name out before heaven tonight and ask God just to minister to her situation. So we welcome God in this service tonight. Ask God to touch that young lady. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we know that there's no distance in prayer tonight. God, we know that you are the healer and God, that her soul is in the balance tonight, but you died for her. God, that you would minister to her need right now, Lord, and that her to acknowledge you as your, her Savior. Touch that family, God, that's in turmoil tonight. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, minister to that child tonight, Lord, that young lady. God, this service tonight, we welcome you. Oh, God, that her hearts would come alive tonight as never before. God, we believe you tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody worship and give him praise. Yes, God. We humble ourselves now as we pray.
God. Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the fire. Come on, we're called by your name tonight, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and praise Him for just a moment tonight. God, we are called by Your name tonight. God, we humble our hearts before You. God, we come before You needing You tonight, God. Come on. Everything, God, ever sin. Come on, talk to it, church. Lift your voice and say, Just raise our hands towards heaven tonight and say, Lord, visit us tonight in our hearts. Touch us in the depths of our spirit. Oh, God, that ear to hear that I understand. God, say it one more time. We are the ones called by your name. We humble ourselves now as we pray. Renouncing every sin and we give way. Fresh on me. Take it one more time. I feel good. Lord, 
him a praise tonight. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this house tonight. I went home this evening, and I, I just wept before the Lord of what I felt here this morning, that same sweet spirit, still this house tonight. Come on, would you just raise your hands one more time and thank you for touching Brother Raleigh tonight, minister to every need. I'm I think I said this the other night. Jesus, some lepers asked the Lord to heal them. He said, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says as they went, they were healed. As they, as they was obedient, they were healed. And one looked back and said, my God, wait just a minute here. Look at what's happening here. <laughs> he turned back to give God some glory for the things that had been happening to his life. How many believe that we need to give God some glory for what's been happening in our life tonight? I don't care what you've been going through. He's a good God tonight. Come on, somebody. Give him some praise in this house tonight. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Send the rain, Lord. Send the fire, God. God, we humble our hearts before you. we got to have you, God. God, we've just got to have you tonight. In the name of the Lord, one more time. Hallelujah. Would you just give God a praise in your own way tonight? Come on and honor him. Come on and just honor him right now. For all of his goodness, all of his mercies. Oh, God, thank you for stirring and awakening our spirits tonight. God, it's an hour, God, of, of a stirring, God. I thank you for it tonight. I love you for it tonight. Give God some worship again. Come on. Come on, give God some praise tonight. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the goodness that you are to us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I know he's a mighty good God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the fire. Let the fire. Your fire. Heal us. Heal us, God. Fall fresh on me. Can we just sing that one more time before we change this service tonight? Lord, send the rain. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him, would you? Let the fire fall. Heal us one and all. Fall fresh on me. Sing it again one more time. And Lord, send the rain. Lord, send the rain. He's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I just feel the Spirit of God just, just, just wanting to pour over his people tonight. Come on, just, just give the worship for just a moment tonight and just let him just pour over you tonight. There's, there's miracles in this house. There's things in this here tonight where you've been battling You've been beat down by the spirits of hell and even beat, beat down by your own mistakes. But tonight, God is 
want to change that by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody raise your hands and just love him for just a moment. Let me hear what I just said to you. I want to say that again. I want you to understand me. Some of you have been beat down by the oppression of the enemy, and some of you have been beat down by your own mistakes, and you beat your own self. But tonight, there's just a lifting of that by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a healing in this house tonight by the power of God. Come on, somebody just raise your hands and love him. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hands and love him tonight. But tonight there's some things that are changing by the power of the Holy Ghost. I feel that in my spirit. I feel that by the spirit of God tonight, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. But tonight there's a change taking place. Come on, raise your hands and just love him all over this place. This altar's open. Hallelujah. Anything you need from God tonight is here. There's a stirring and a, and a reviving in this building tonight of the Spirit of God. You need to take that spirit of hell that's been trying to beat you down and tell you that you're not good enough and that, amen, that you're not worthy and tell devil, you are a liar tonight. I've been washed in the blood. I've been forgiven of my sins and I've been released from that burden and that sin and that curse and that shame and that guilt through the blood of Jesus tonight. Come on, somebody love him. Come on, somebody love him right now. Lord, send the rain. Hallelujah. Let the fire fall. fall. Heal us. There's some people that need just a healing tonight. Would you walk down this front before we change this service? Let God heal you right now. Let him start pouring in the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. Some of you have been disobedient to God. You feel beat down. But tonight God wants to set you free from that. In the name of the Lord. Anybody want to come? Sing it. Pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall. Heal us one and all. Yo 
God a shout of praise tonight, would you? Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on and give God a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and give him a praise tonight. I know he's a mighty God tonight. Somebody give him one more praise. He's a mighty good God. He's a mighty good God tonight. That's it, Brother Seth. Just praise him, young man. Hallelujah. I could go home right now and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And you could do that tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. While you remain standing tonight, would you just open your Bibles to the book of Habakkuk to start with? The book of Habakkuk start with. Hallelujah. Thank you, singers. God bless you. You've done an awesome job. Do you give these singers just a great, awesome hand tonight? They're always here praising and uplifting. It's, amen. It's so, so good tonight by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to the book of Habakkuk tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is part of the message. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 46, Daniel. How many glad that you've got an ear to hear with tonight? How many glad you've got an ear to hear tonight? See, you can tell some folk and encourage them and tell them that, that what they need and they don't hear it. Then there's others that sees the need and says, I've got to have it. Amen. I know that we have not took up an offering. We've not done a lot of things, but I just feel like preaching a minute while the Spirit of God is upon this. And I was getting ready to come over here tonight. I, I studied and I prayed and I get ready to come over here. And the Lord spoke to me and said, there will be a supernatural intervention. I don't know what all that means exactly, but there's going to be a supernatural intervention. When hell... And the demonic demons of hell and all the things gather around and they've got you pinned in. And then God breaks through. That's called a inter, in, in, uh, supernatural intervention. And I believe that we get ready to see a supernatural intervention by the power of the Holy Ghost. Anybody believe that with me tonight? See, you've got to believe it or you, 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 you'll never see it. Amen. And I want to be able to see what God has for us tonight. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, there, there's a certain amount of rejoicing and there's a certain amount of concern that I have because how many of you ever got a child that's maybe wayward or you think that, you ever sit down and think for just a moment, you, you can be seated for just a minute. This is not to change the atmosphere, but have you ever just sat down and pondered, what if your husband or wife don't go to heaven? What if your children don't go to heaven? You ever just sit down and think about, what if you don't go to heaven? This is a no-so way. Not a maybe way, hope so way, it's a, it's a no-so. And you've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to make it. See, there's some folks very skeptical that they're going to make I hope I'll make it. But this ain't a hope, I hope I'm going to make it. Either you're going to make it or you're not. Can I get a witness in this house? Now, I, I know what some people believe and how they believe certain things. Don't matter what comes, what goes. And Amen. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved by the grace of God. Amen. Uh, but I live by that grace also. Somebody shout amen. amen. But in the book of Habakkuk, the first chapter, we're just going to go just, just skim over just a little bit of it. And I don't have time to go through the whole chapter or the whole book. But in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, Habakkuk is complaining of the iniquity that's in the land, the things that are going on. 
Somebody shout amen. Habakkuk, Habakkuk is talking to the Lord, and he's really pouring his heart out to God. And I believe if we ever poured our heart out to God, we need to pour it out right now. I believe you need to go before God honestly and say, God, this is the way it is. God, this is going on, and you know that, but God, I want to acknowledge what I need you in tonight. Amen. And the prophet was going through all of his complaints, and then in chapter number 2, he begins to talk about some things that that is getting ready to happen, and this is where I want to start reading at tonight. If you would, one more time, if, you, if it's possible, standing on the reading of God's Word tonight. In chapter 2, Habakkuk is waiting on God for an answer. How many knows there's a time that you have to wait on God for Him to answer you, but you don't get discouraged or get weary. You just say, God, I'm holding on till I hear it. Tell your neighbor, I'm willing to wait on God. God's not early. God's not late. Always at the moment that God's supposed to do it, he'll bring it to pass. How many believes that? Amen. A lot of our nation needs God tonight. This world needs God tonight. I believe tonight that even as this plague is going across this land, and it looks like it's a judgment on all the gods that people have made gods out of. All the superstars. All the things that people have put their livelihood in. God will judge these things. All these heathenistic nations that denounce God. Amen. But the Bible says this in chapter one, chapter 2 of Habakkuk. I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower and will watch to see what he'll say unto me. What I shall answer when I am reproved. Somebody shout amen. amen. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for appointed time. Everybody shout appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. Somebody shout amen. The man of God is saying, I've got to get God's word in my life. I've got to hear from God more than anything else. Amen. Amen. Brother Buddy, would you say the prayer over the reading of the word? Yes, God. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more shout of praise tonight. You may be seated tonight. God bless you. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Believing God for great things. Somebody shout amen. I want to preach a few minutes tonight by the grace of God. I'm willing to wait. Somebody shout I'm willing to wait. If God don't answer me today, I'll wait till tomorrow. But one thing about it, I've got to have the word of the Lord in my life. Can you say that with me? I've got to have the word of the Lord in my life. Because without the word of the Lord, you have no direction. Without the guidance of God, you're out there just wandering. But God is a God of direction tonight. Can I get a witness? Amen. Daniel, if you'll go to chapter 3 tonight. Amen. Only three chapters here, but amen. I want you to listen to this in verse number 1. 
And a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet of Shignog. O Lord, I have heard thy speech. I've heard of the fame of you, Lord, and I was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work. Somebody shout amen. In the midst of the years and in the midst of the years, make known in Ralph, remember mercy. The Bible says that God came from Tema, and I begin to understand, amen. That was where the sun came up, the rising of the sun, amen. It was God, what Bucca was saying was this, amen. As the sun arises and gives light, God, you'll rise on our need tonight. Somebody shout amen. I begin to look at these scriptures and amen, Jeremiah or uh, Habakkuk begin to say, I'll stand on my watch, uh, amen, I'll set me uh, up on the tower uh, and I will watch uh, and I will hear what God says uh, unto me. Somebody uh, ought to shout yes, hallelujah. I begin to look at that uh, and he said the just uh, shall live by faith. Uh, give God one more shout of praise. Uh, Amen. I want you to understand tonight uh, that God uh, is on is in control uh, and He's going to answer tonight. Uh, amen. By the grace of God. Uh, amen. Uh, 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 Psalms chapter ninety two tonight. Bear with me just a moment. Amen. Psalms chapter ninety two and verse number ten. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor I'm willing to wait by the grace of God. Amen. How many of y'all still willing to wait and believe God tonight? If I don't see it today, I'll believe it tomorrow. Hallelujah, but God, you've got a word. I said, you've got a word for me, God, and I know you've got that word. It's life to me. It's victory to me. It's everything I have need of tonight is God's word tonight. Amen. God began to talk to me, and he said, son, amen, I'm getting ready to do a divine intervention. God in the midst of every chaos, he's going to show himself strong. Can you, can you see that tonight by the grace of God? Can you see God moving, amen, when everything's falling apart? Can you see the steady hand of God, amen, whenever the power of hell has come against uh, to tear it down uh, and to upset it? But there's the hand of God uh, right in the middle of it. Uh, and in the book of Habakkuk, uh, he said, amen, the stall uh, is clean uh, and there ain't no vines uh, and there ain't anything uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise my hands and I'm going to praise God. I'm going to give God glory because God is still in charge of this thing tonight. Come on and give him a shout of praise. God began to deal with me. He said, son, I'm going to pour anointing out upon my church. I'm going to anoint them as they have not been anointed. I'm going to anoint them even that which was beyond the day of Pentecost. You hear what I said there? Listen to this. He said, my horn shall be exalted like the horn of the unicorn. That unicorn is not what we see on the TV today of a, some kind of a horse looking thing with a horn on it. This was a very monstrous ox or a huge ram type animal which was symbolic that the writer David was using here, a man of great strength. Amen. In, in, in the history, uh, it was symbolic. It was uh, an emblem as we use the eagle today in America and, and different, amen, uh, London or uh, England there does with the eagle uh, or with the lion. Uh, amen. This unicorn uh, was an emblem. Uh, amen. Uh, it was a symbol uh, of unconquerable power. Uh, somebody ought to shout yes in here. Uh, hallelujah. We've got a church tonight uh, that is unconquerable uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, listen to me. I'm not preaching about the flesh. I'm talking about the man inside you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in that world. Somebody ought to shout yes in here. Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Great power. Anointing tonight. Hallelujah by the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy don't want this service. He don't want this, uh, this message tonight. We're going to preach it. It don't matter what comes or goes. He said he shall anoint me 
My horn shall be exalted like the horn of the unicorn. That word horn was the strength. God said, I'm going to anoint you with strength like you have not had. There's a strength, amen, beyond you tonight. There's a strength inside you that'll go on when you should exalt, be exhausted. You should fall. You should fail. But there's anointing on the inside of you. And why is that there? Because I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Somebody ought to shout. There's a fresh oil of the anointing of God in this house, across this land, across this country. And the devil's doing everything he can to hinder it, to scatter it. But all he's going to do is to spread it. So you got Bible for that? Yeah. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost came, and the, all they were all gathered in Jerusalem. And they were having church at Jerusalem. But persecution came. Woo! He was trying to put it out, trying to kill it. Amen. That persecution began to scatter them. One went over here. One went over there. One went that way. And everywhere they went, there was a move of the Holy Ghost. Brother, I believe as you go, you're going to be healed by the anointing of God. I believe that fresh oil tonight. I believe in the power of that oil tonight. Somebody shout yes. God began to take me and show me some things. Amen. Some people don't believe in visions and dreams. Amen. But I'm a believer of them because I have them. Amen. Sometimes I have a dream. I feel like an old man. Sometimes I have a vision. I feel like the young man. I told y'all a while back, I just thought I'm going to stay in the middle. Somebody shout hallelujah. God began to deal with me. I mean, this word is powerful tonight. It's quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Now listen, amen. I'll begin to say, God, how are you talking to me on this? See, God's word says something and it's right. That's one side of the sword. But when you say it, you're the other side of that sword. And it'll cut through your problems. It'll cut through your discouragement. Huh? It'll cut through your defeats. When you say what God says, there's a two-edged sword coming out of your mouth. I wish y'all get that. Because what you have is life in your tongue. I'm not going to preach about the other side of it. I said, you've got life in your tongue tonight. And I'm going to be anointed with fresh oil. But God began to talk to me. And he said, son, tell my people in the book of Jeremiah chapter 46. Somebody give him a shout of praise right now. Woo. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, we've had a lot of negativity in the church. We've had a lot of things about the church. We've had a lot of churches to grow cold. We've had a lot of churches to get lukewarm. Amen. He told one of you, you've left your first love. He told another that you're allowing teachings that's ungodly in the church. Told another different things. Amen. I won't go even go on that. All the churches there in Asia, there was five of them that he had somewhat against. Amen. But then, amen. He said, it, but if you will repent, it'll change. Repentance is the hour, the word for the hour right now. Hallelujah. I'm preaching a word, amen, in season right now. Can I get a witness in this house? Tell your neighbor I'm going to be anointed with fresh oil. Amen. I feel that unconquerable power of God telling me I'm not a loser but a winner. I'm not defeated, but I'm a conqueror by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
My God, I'm anointed tonight. Amen. I'm going to hear what God says. God, I'm waiting to hear. God, what are you saying? And God began to talk to me. And he said the church had been in a place that a lot of me got complacent. Amen. And God spoke it to me like this to give it to you. They went down to the pawn shop and they pawned the very things that God had used in their lives. Can I get a witness? They got discouraged. They got into a place and they went down and put it somewhere. But God said there's a rising up. There's anointing coming by the power of God. Woo! Somebody ought to shout. I'm telling you, amen, the pawn shop ain't going to get what I got tonight by the grace of God. A lot of God's people have pawned what they've got just to get a little ease from the world, to let the battle light, lighten up a little bit. Mm. If I was a black man, I'd open my mouth and squall. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 46, verse number four. Give God another shout of praise. You ever see God's people take what their talents, their gifts, because somebody don't like it, because somebody they get in a battle and they just sort of put it somewhere, and the church quit operating under the unction of the Spirit of God, then we become man-made, and man articulates and tries to guide the church. But in himself, man can't even order his own steps. <laughs> Preaching real good now. When I begin to look at this, God says so many people have got to the place they don't exercise what I once give them. You know the first thing that God will give you is praise? But you know, you got something the world don't have. You can worship and nobody, you, you, if you're in a Christian, you can't worship. You have to know him to worship him. Amen. Now, just to me, if I can get to show you this. Sometimes to get something to ease, man, if I hadn't a priest like that, I, 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 wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have this battle. If I had to took a stand, I wouldn't have went up in the den of lions. If I hadn't stood up and if I just bowed with everybody else, I wouldn't be going to a furnace of fire. But there were some people who said, wait a minute, I'm not going to sell this thing out. Stay with me. But there was a people getting anointed with fresh oil. Somebody shout hallelujah. There was a word coming, brother. That was a word in season. And I'm set up looking for it. Woo, somebody shout hallelujah. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, it's time to harness the horses again. It's time to get prepared again. It's time to get ready. Somebody shout yes. It's time to get ready. I said it's time to get ready. Tell your neighbor it's time to get ready. Amen. Amen. I don't watch it at home, but I was somewhere to rest a while back, and amen, they was in this, I, I, I don't know what it's really even called, this kickbox fighting stuff. It was on the TV. I don't know what, they, I don't know what it's even called. And I looked at that for a minute, and I'm thinking, my God, you got to be crazy to get in that cage, and that guy's going to try to kick your brains out. I watched that one guy bounce that guy's head around. His head shook like a bobhead. I'm thinking, boy, I'll tell you what, if he wakes up tomorrow, he's going to feel it. That boy had to have a concussion when that guy hit him. I mean, he hit that, he hit that mat, and it was over. Somebody shout amen. He didn't wait for the referee to run over and pick his hand up. He just started jumping down. He knowed he had it. He didn't nobody tell him he had it. 
You know what you and I need to do? We need to bump that devil's head so hard that he knows we got it. Because he's done been defeated. That ought to make a Pentecostal want to shout right there. Woo! Harness the horses. They've been, un- they've been the stall. Nothing going on. But harness the horses. Come on, somebody. Get up, ye horsemen. You that ride them horses. Get up and get ready to ride. Somebody shout yes. I said there's a fresh oil. There's a move of God. There's a healing right in the midst of all these viruses and these plagues and the chaos. The church has got a chance to rise up and stand up and shout. God is still God. He's still holy. Oh, somebody ought to praise him tonight. See, let me tell you something. I'm not against ball. I'm not against ball players. I ain't against any of this stuff. But when you make gods out of them, God said, I won't share my glory with this. Race cars. I can knock it all down. Well, glory. And all them other gods just got to bow down and say, can't do nothing with it. God's still sitting on the throne, sovereign. Now, let me tell you something, sir. Hey, man. You ever feel like you, you, ever, you ever been to the pawn shop? I ain't going to embarrass nobody, but did you ever pawn anything? You don't think you're going to need it for a while. Somebody may just need some money. Did you have a hard place? So you'll pawn something valuable to get out of that hard place. This way God gave it to me, so I'm going to share it with you like God shared it and give it to me. As long as you keep that little ticket and keep that interest paid, it'll stay there for so many days or ever what. But after a while, you can get worried you can't pay the interest, they start stacking up on you. That old boy in the pawn shop will start claiming what belongs to you. You may seem like I want it, but I can't pay that price now. And you're about to forfeit one of the most precious things that you once possessed. Is that good preaching or not? This way God gave it to me. See, our praise is awesome in the sight of God. I don't praise God just to make the devil mad. I praise God because of who he is tonight. And God began to deal with me with this word of the Lord, with this understanding that a lot of people has put away the thing they once used for God. Things that went out of the church, the gifts of the Spirit. So today, it is, it is a stranger in the house of God. And if anywhere God does move, it seems so out of style that people call us fanatics or crazy. I'm one of them. Y'all can raise your hand. They don't see your car out here, so you just have to get with it. You one of them, huh? Amen. You mean to tell me you go to that church? Yes, sir. You ought to come. You do you some good. You know, tell. Make them think about it. Now watch this. So many of our churches, and I'm, 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 uh, 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 Jesus died for the church. We're not talking about a name over a door, but the body of Christ, the people of God. And, but a lot of them, I've been in the Methodist, I've been in the Baptist, I've been in a Catholic church. It wasn't for church, don't worry about that. But 
But I, I've been in the church of God. I've been in independent churches. Been in all t- minor, a lot of different types of different types of denominational churches. I won't, I'll miss somebody. And I can remember, no matter where you went, people could pray. Oh God! I can remember going to one little Baptist church. Man, that lady got on that altar. And she began to oh! She began to intercede. Everybody in that church got to crying and interceding to God. I've been down to the church of God where that, amen, they file out, amen, ten at a time. Boom. See them shout all over the place. I see them lay down the spirit of God and somebody get to shout and shout all around and never step on a person. I was in Tennessee one night, Sister Gina and I, In a Pentecostal service, this woman got to shouting. She got to shouting, going towards the front, shouting backwards. And there was an altar bench up there, what they used to call the mourner's bench. She shouted up to that backwards. And I know she didn't quit shouting. She going to go over that head first. Backwards. Feet in the air. The woman had a dress on. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm getting prepared to shut my eyes. Well, glory, I wasn't going to gawk. And I'm telling you, I seen her. She got the shout and got up to that bench, and there she went. I shut them eyes. Gene punched me. Said, look at her. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. You can believe anything you want to, but I've been there. That woman fell over that altar backwards. Her dress never came up. Never was the thing indecent. It was like God had a hold of that. Woo! Don't tell me God is not in the control of this thing. Somebody ought to shout yes in here. I'm talking about the power of God. I was amazed, amen, to see the power of God demonstrate that we have lost something, but it's time to harness the horses and get ready, horsemen. We're getting ready to ride. I said, we're getting ready to ride. How are we going to ride? We're getting ready to get into a battle. And brother, the devil, the powers of hell, the chains, the powers, the pressions, oppression, depression, Mental breakdowns uh, has got to go uh, by the power uh, of the Holy Ghost. Anybody believe what I'm telling you? But you got to be like Habakkuk. You got to wait. And I'm waiting. God, because this thing's getting ready to break out. The church has got an Everybody shout, the church got an opportunity right now. You got an opportunity to stand up and testify. You said the people don't want to hear it. You're here, ain't you? You're here. I look at some of y'all and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to witness some of y'all. <laughs> well, glory. You didn't want this thing. I didn't think a college professor would want this, but he, he does. Somebody shout amen. He's got it. I didn't think a diesel mechanic Oh, God, knowing, mm, but you know what? He got it. Somebody shout hallelujah. I told Brother Brian, I'm glad I didn't even know him before he got saved. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah again. (laughs) Well, glory. Amen. If you were to know this young lady, you would never witness to her. She didn't want God. That and back there with her, her twin. Amen. Call Rhonda. 
Amen. She didn't want it either. But they both got it by the grace of an almighty God. Tell your neighbors time to harness the horses. It's time to get up, horsemen. It's time to get up. Woo, somebody ought to shout yes. Stand up with your helmets. Amen. What is that helmet? That helmet of salvation, that helmet of deliverance, uh, that helmet, uh, amen, uh, of the mind of Christ. Uh, somebody say, uh, I've got the mind of Christ. Uh, amen. Uh, we need to be sensitive right now. Uh, when God says, don't go over there, uh, don't go. Uh, when God says, stop, uh, we need to stop. Uh, amen. We need to listen to the voice of God. Uh, God says, tell him. Uh, tell him what he needs. Uh, tell him about the power of God. Uh, tell him about the resurrection. Uh, tell him about God. Uh, reviving people. Amen. I'm sitting on my watch because God's speaking to us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Harness the horses. I'm going I'm to ride this. I'm going to get this because I want you to get it. Everybody say get ready. If you could see what I've seen through the spiritual realm, there had been a release of demonic forces to literally flood this land and to devastate this land. I saw the standard of God, the holiness of God stand up against that flood and that tide. And when it come up against it, it had to turn back because that standard was strong. God, is anybody hear what I'm preaching to you right now? I feel this from my head to my toes. This thing's real, buddy. This thing's real. This thing's real. I saw the wickedness. I saw things that I can't describe to you. It's not in, I don't, I don't think it's in a vocabulary. I've seen the, the hordes of hell. Amen. And I saw it, amen, in places. Amen. Hallelujah. Literally destroying and wiping away. But I've seen the Spirit of God rise up among His people uh, and the Spirit of standard. Uh, amen. Uh, I said, God, I know that's Bible. I know it's Bible. Uh, and then, amen, uh, it came to me in, uh, in Isaiah uh, in 62, there I believe it is. Uh, amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. I say, God, I know. God will always confirm. Amen. I wasn't thinking about it. Amen. I didn't know about it, but I'm preaching by the revelation of the power of God tonight. Does anybody hear me? I saw a standard of God. I saw the people of God under the anointing of the fresh oil stand up and the power of hell could not penetrate that. That's real tonight. Cannot overcome it. My strength will be that as of a, a unicorn. It's a strength that is supernatural. Overcoming power. Somebody shout hallelujah. Something that is so amazing that you stand and go, that's got to be God. That's God. I remember the old people preaching and talking and singing and visitations that they got. And You know, as a kid, sometimes I thought, <laughs> as I got older, I began to realize it was visitations of God. And even when I was lost and in that world, there was a time that I could feel the presence of God. And God would tell me something or visit me to warn me, to keep me from destroying myself. Yeah, God's been good to you like that too, whether you understand it or not. Give me just a couple more minutes. Stand with your helmet. Stand with the mind of Christ. Church, you need to get, listen, some of your family ain't going to stand this. I hate to say that. Some of my family ain't going to understand this. Do you know that some people don't want the ark because they believe it ain't going to rain? What if China deliberately created this thing or increased it to destroy our nation? You can't put it past a one of them. Huh. 
because they would love to have America. But they're not putting in the equation the capital G-O-D, Jehovah God. You may can fight another nation and win, but you can't fight God and win. Huh? Just hang on with me because I'm almost done. Stand forth with your helmets. You, folks, if you ever need the mind of Christ, you need it right now. If you ever need God being formed in you, Christ, the hope of glory formed in you. Are you preaching with me now? Furbish the spear. The spear had got dull. It had lost its luster. The spear that would cause others to fear had become dull and unused. Somebody shout amen. Tell your neighbor you get to polish this thing. <laughs> Anybody with me tonight? Huh? Now, I, I can preach you just a, a, a 10 cent message. I'm not belittling that, but I'm, I'm trying to preach you something for this hour, for this moment. We've got children that need God. We've got families that need God tonight. We've got young married families that's got three and four children that have never been in the house of God one time in their life within a mile of this church. You can't hardly get in the courtrooms because of family courts. Amen, Brother Wayne. Everything in the world, we need God. We need to get ready to fight a battle. Somebody say, Preacher, I'm tired of fighting battles. No, this ain't a battle like you fought in the past. This is a conquering battle. This is a battle that you're walking in confidence. Can I get a witness in here? Anybody hear what I'm telling you? This ain't a battle you're hoping you're hoping that you'll come through it and you'll survive it. But this is something you've got strength uh, and you've got the confidence of God. Uh, amen. Uh, oh, somebody want to shout yes. Hallelujah. Come here, sir. Let me use you. Amen. Uh, listen, as you think in your heart, that's who you are. And before you thought in your heart different things uh, and you became that. Uh, but God says, uh, amen, when you begin to get the mind uh, and that helmet, uh, amen, the greater is he that's in me. I can do this thing. I'm a conqueror. I'm victorious. Christ is in me. The hope of glory. And I'm going to win this battle. I'm going to conquer this thing. The flood and the tide of hell has came. But I've got a standard on the inside of me. I feel, oh, I feel the waves of hell. But I feel the strength of God. This ain't not a chance, devil. Furbish the spear. Get that thing ready, sir. Get your spear ready. Get it ready. We get ready to go in battle. Somebody shout amen. You go into a battle and you ain't got no confidence, you'll lose it. I don't care if you're, if you're superior in it. Huh? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God's good. I say God's good. Furbish the spear. Tell your neighbors, time to reclaim my armor. It's time to take the ticket. Say, I've come to pick up. I feel prophecy again. I feel a shout coming on. If you can act wild for a Pepsi commercial, you ought to get hysterical for God. Somebody shout yes. Try to catch your time. I'll flip the channel now. I don't know what pizza company it is. It's got that dude on there. It ain't got no birches on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Comes through the house. Uh, I looked at that and I said, I curse you, you pervert. Well, 
Well, that went over real good. If you got to do that to sell a pizza, you got a bad pizza. I wouldn't take it to give it to me. Now, you may buy it and me not know it, and I might eat it, but if I know it, I won't. Come on, church. See, so many times we start tolerating things. You start tolerating it. You'll accept it after a while. Amen, Brother Wayne. Furbish the spears. Let's get them out of the closets. Let's get them out of the pond. Amen. Because the guy that holds them in pond don't care anything about it, don't mean anything to him. Let me tell you something tonight. I've got probably 10 Bibles. I've maybe got more than that. Over in my prayer room. I don't know what the Bibles I've got. But this is something precious to me. And one reason it's precious is because I, put, I feel it in my heart. And it, it's alive in me. been battled, I've been fought, everything in the world, but God's mercy and his grace and humbling my heart, as I told you this morning and I may share it in the next little while, different times, how God has started to take, he's took my pacifier away. He'll take your little toys away. Because when you're a child, you act like a child. You get upset over nothing. That's my toy. What about these chips on our shoulders? Feel like God ain't fair to us. I'm preaching y'all now. God took my bottle away. <laughs> I'm preaching about me. This pity in yourself. Well, nobody understands me. Well, they probably got good reason because you don't understand yourself either. Got to get over it. Come on, y'all. Felicia, I'm going to have to borrow your fan. It's getting warm in here. God begins to take these little things away from us. He says, it's time for you to change. It's time for you to quit acting. I was in a pastor's church a few weeks ago, a month or two, two months ago. And I was talking to him. And he said, I've got folks in my church that's 25 and 30 years old in the Lord, and they've not grown a bit since the day they got saved. They still act the very same way they did when they first got saved. He said, I'm doing my best to preach and help them to change. So why don't I judge myself and say, God, am I still just like I was 10 years ago? Am I preaching y'all night? No, it's got a little quiet, but it's time to harness the horses. It's time to get up, horsemen. Hey, God didn't call you to sit on yourself. God says, get up. You're a horseman. You should be taking care of that horse and getting it ready for battle. You need to get your helmet ready. Whew, glory to be to God. You need to get your spear ready. Huh? Tell your neighbor, God's been taking us away. Well, I, didn't, I didn't realize what there was, but now I'm seeing it. That's why some of us is whined all night. I remember when we weaned them calves sometime, take the mom away. Oh, God, you never heard such bellowing all night long. 
they'll, they'll beller and beller and beller because they ain't got mama. <laughs> Preaching pretty good now, ain't I? But after a while, they get over it. They start eating grass. They start growing up. They start changing. The church as a whole in America, we've had it so easy. But what if persecution breaks out? What if trouble starts coming? And I believe it will be I believe it's coming. Because they hate us. As Hitler used the propaganda that it was the Jews' fault for the economy of, uh, of, of Germany and begin to accuse them Jews of all the problems that they could master, massacre those Jewish people without a conscience. You know the propaganda about a Christian today? You're fanatical, you're radical, you're dangerous. Bible thumping, Bible toting. Holy Ghost filled people are insane. Can I get a witness in the house? Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. As I close with this, tell your neighbor, harness the horse. Hallelujah. Say it again. Harness the horse. Stand forth with your helmets. Furbish the spears. Tell your neighbor, get them ready. And put on your brigadins. Put on your coat of mail. Put on your armor. Amen. As I close tonight, God gave me this message. Several years ago, I was in a camp meeting. Many of you have heard it before, especially if you've been at Rowena. I was in a camp meeting. I saw this person of God, highly anointed and sought God. They kept looking at me while I was up front there, and and it, I didn't know why they kept looking at me. Sort of felt intimidated for just a little bit because I didn't know what they was looking at. You know what 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 were they wanting? And every time I glanced back, they'd still be standing there looking at me. You know when when a preacher gets to look at you just right, you know they look at them eyes. That you go and say, "Why do you look like that for?" <laughs> That's the way I used to do when I. God, that preacher look right through you. He look a hole in you. But he walked up to me and said, Sir, I want to tell you something. God has put a war anointing on you. Well, I didn't understand exactly what that meant. He said, You're going to be able to war against enemies that's beyond understanding and be conquerors of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. I believe tonight by the power of God that God's anointing you with a, whew, God, hallelujah. Somebody raise your hands and praise him. Come on, somebody shake that thing off in the name of the Lord by the power of God. Stand to your feet all over this building. Come to the music, amen. Tell your neighbor tonight God is good. Come on, tell your neighbor God is good tonight. There's a war anointing in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I've got dressed for I'll go back to that old boy with the pizza. I wouldn't care to bought his pizza if he had been dressed. Dominoes. Yeah, man, Brother Wayne. They can do what they want to. I don't care. I mean, that's up to them. But I thought, God, if that's the only way to sell it, something wrong. Half clothed. Somebody said, well, he wasn't indecent. I beg your pardon. Let me come in with my shirt tail hanging out. You tell me I ain't indecent. Come on. You come here like that, we'll put you in a room and pray for you. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just telling the truth. But you know what? Most people think that's funny. And just joke about it because we have tolerated it. Then we accept it. Preaching good to y'all. 
Tell your neighbor, get ready. Because there's a victory. I hear the abundance of it. There's anointing in this house tonight. I see some of you in this building that, that you've got a hunger down in here. You don't even understand it all. But there's a yearning in you just to have the touch of God and the anointing of God. I've told this many times. I've seen some of y'all repeat me when I say it. But I was at Mitchell Street Church of God many years ago. A little old preacher was a evangelist out there in that revival. White-headed man. Combed his hair back on each side. His name was Lester Marantine. He's probably dead in glory tonight. He was an elderly man then. And he preached, I was born in the fire and I can't survive in the smoke. A lot of people's got smoke, but they got no fire. But I want the fire. How many of y'all want the fire tonight? Would you raise your hands all over this building and say, God, God, I got to get equipped tonight to fight this battle. God, I'm going to wait upon you as Habakkuk. God, I'm going to wait. God, I'm going to believe that you're going to come through. I want some people tonight that would just come to this front and say, God, I've got to put on this armor like I've not had it. God, I've got to get a hold of you like I've never had it. Amen. Before they sang this song, before they sang this song, amen, they started out, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. They didn't know I was going to preach this message. Amen. God send the fire, send the rain. These messages, these songs fit the message tonight, church. God have mercy. How many's on to the battlefield tonight? Come on to the front. That's it. Come on tonight. To begin to talk to God. Amen. Sing the song tonight. Oh, we are ready for the final fight. This altar's open if you're Been lost tonight. In the blood this and altar's open if you need God tonight. Come on, everybody We're would. Filled with that Ask Holy God to Ghost stir your heart power tonight. And Oh yes, come on. Oh, we are ready for over. the fight. Oh, no Put on that helmet. Get ready. 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 Get ready.
Lord Who'll be standing when this fight is done So get up and be obedient to our Lord's command At any moment He will come Well, riding on a wise horse Heaven's army saw the Lord. He was speaking God, in every situation. every the anointing of the Holy Ghost oh, the victory has been won In His name we overcome It's time we let our enemy know We are ready for the final fight In Jesus' name Been washed in, in the blood And our garments clean and white We're filled with that Holy Ghost Power and light We're now ready for the final fight that God's getting the church ready for that right there. In the name of the Lord. Listen to me as I close tonight. Amen. God spoke this to me and I'll stand on it. My life, if I don't believe this, my life ain't worth living. It's real. We've got to get it out of the pond. We've got to get it out of the places that we've laid it off somewhere. How many ever laid something down and forgot where you laid it at? Start looking. Start looking. Start looking. Give God a shout of praise. Young man, God done something for you a while ago. God done something for you. Take it and run with it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. I believe we can do a little better than that tonight. How many of y'all ready for that final? That's a good song. That's perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time. Give God praise. Tell you never will wait. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remain standing. We'll receive tonight's offering. This is going to meet the needs of the church. Amen. The expenses are great, but God's greater than the needs. Somebody shout amen. But I give not because there's needs. I give because I'm blessed. Hallelujah. So Brother Sean, Brother, can you take the offering up, Brother Jason? Amen. Give tonight. I mean, if you write a check, make it to Solid Rock Church. Amen. God's good. How many don't want to miss this thing? We don't want to miss this thing. Amen. I want to say it's good to see you folks sitting on the front seat tonight. God bless you for being right there. You could have picked a better place to sit than right there. Amen. God's a good God. I know he's a mighty good God tonight. Amen. Appreciate you. It's good to have the young man with us. Brother Sister. Amen. I forgot your name again. I apologize. Brother Kenny, good to have Kenny with us tonight for his first. Thank you for being here to hear it. Thank you for that. Amen. Amen. God's good tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd seen him. I'd seen him quite a few times, but I hadn't seen him for a while. And I said, I know that guy from somewhere. Somebody shout hallelujah. Appreciate him tonight being with us. Amen. How many's been blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Remember the service Tuesday night. We got prayer service. If you can make it, come and pray with us.